The coronavirus is all over the internet, the news and daily talks. Today I want to talk about self-isolation and how to cope with that without getting depression or having a fairly severe your mental health and relationships. So we all know that relationships is one of the key factors in our well-being and happiness as a 70-year study at Harvard University have shown it is the most important factor and isolation is also used as a tool of torture. So as social animals we're facing a real challenge with this ongoing isolation that could last anything from months to a year. So that's what I want to address today and look at some things that you could do to keep your mental health in order and well and also continue to enhance your social connections. So actually that can be a big opportunity in any crisis and as a lot of social scientists have explored and is also explored in the book uh, Tribal by I think he's called Sebastian Zeba who looked at the fact that actually mental health issues went down in crisis such as 9-11 and Second World War and actually improved because we had a common goal and we came together so I think there's a big opportunity here rather than going out to pubs or bars and clubs and drinking and restaurants and our usual way of consumerism to try and connect with each other there's a real option here where we could try and use this to enhance and deepen our connection together so here are the three tips that I recommend in while being in self-isolation number one agree with friends and family that you have to set up a group that have weekly check-ins at least once or twice a week and you can organize these groups on Facebook, on WhatsApp, or any other tool that you might use um, that allow you guys to stay in contact and check in with each other, but also agree a weekly time, at least once or twice a week, that you speak to check in, and you can do that on a video call, again, on WhatsApp, FaceTime, Zoom. There are so many tools that can facilitate this free of charge. So it's never been easier if you have a connection, because, again, seeing each other, um, is a big element of social connection and we can't get that just through speaking. So while the element of touch obviously we can't have while we're in self-isolation, we can definitely do the best we can with technology, which is speaking and seeing each other. So set that up. The second thing is how do you then use these calls to actually enhance connection and yeah, that's what step two is all about, which is be vulnerable. So what I suggest is rather than just random chat or aimless looking at each other and not knowing where to go or sharing about your daily job, talk about fears or vulnerabilities that you have in your life and set aside five minutes for each person to share about challenges, vulnerabilities that they might have and also express any support that they might need at this time. And just listen. Don't be judgmental. Don't comment. Don't try to fix. Just listen. So this is a beautiful way to really enhance your connection and get to know each other on a much deeper level and maybe have conversations that you never would have in a club or in a bar, the pub or the restaurant. So again, and you're able to see each other and also maintain eye contact. And after one person finished, again, don't go into a fixing conversation. Just look at each other and acknowledge. And at the end, we then come to now step three which is what I call group mentality. So what this creates is a beautiful opportunity for group mentality, meaning coming together as a group to share a common goal, which is what you all request and support. And you can discuss on what support is needed by each person and how you can then help each other in those different ways that you need support. There could be somebody might need uh, daily phone calls, check-ins to not feel too isolated, somebody else might need, elderly people might need some help with shopping, whatever it might be, you discuss and see how you can help each other. And actually, again, this improves mental health, to have that common goal and to be able to help each other in times of need. Uh, yeah, so this is just three simple steps of how to use what could turn into a really difficult situation of self-isolation and it could affect all our mental health severely and our connections to actually instead turn it around to something that improves our mental health and deepens our connection with others. So I hope you follow these tips and stay safe. And if you want to learn more about how to have deep connection in your relationships, then just head over to sensor.com webinar and sign up to the one hour free webinar and learn more about how to enhance your connections and have more fulfilling relationships. So have a beautiful day and most of all, stay safe everyone.